I'm uh, S. Craig Zoller. I uh, wrote and directed Mo and Tomahawk. I've always liked westerns. I've always liked that genre. But, uh, you know, in a, with a certain style and in a certain way, especially, uh, uh, I thought that uh, Craig Zoller had a, a fantastic way with uh, presenting that time to the audience. It, this was sort of like, you know, I said to him when I finally talked to him, it was just like, somewhere in 1898 to 1905 so he said yeah it's in there somewhere and I said yeah it's it's a great time especially for a story like this so that was my first exposure to it and and I uh, I responded to the screenplay right away I read it and just thought that it was incredible I mean I, I thought the language was so um, authentic it had an authenticity to it the entire world um, I became an immediate fan of, of Zoller. The dialogue is so brilliant. I think the dialogue is, is just genius. Mr. Bruder, just educated two Mexicans on the meaning of manifest destiny. Mr. Bruder just educated two Mexicans on the meaning of manifest destiny. I mean, just sublime. The passion that Kurt Russell had for this script when he read it several years ago is a passion that all of us share. When I write, I am writing towards certain destinations and getting in the mindsets of the characters and at the same time trying to give myself a curveball every single day. This morning I went out to tend to my colt, needed a new shoe, and when I got there, I saw Buford, the stable boy. He was laying there dead. He was all torn up. And so there are certain assumptions that uh, I expect the viewer will have with Bone Tomahawk that I had as the writer when I was writing it, and then I, you know, and then I surprised myself. I said, well, this is gonna go in a different direction in terms of what they're dealing with on the frontier, you know, what they encounter. When are you hearing? It stopped. Just wait a second, you Oh, I thought I was imagining that. Well, I'm fairly certain I heard that sound back in Bright Hope on the night of the kidnapping. First of all, great scripts like this don't come around very often. And Zoller has written an, an unbelievably daring and bold Western and pushed the Western genre, if that's possible. Well, what is that? A wolf? A uh, bear, it looks like. Out or something. We got permission. You know, you combine these horror elements and this thriller aspect, and um, taking a lot of stereotypes and, and turning them sideways, and that's exciting to be a part of. Um, so you get the classic Western feel of these guys, you know, on, going on their journey. But what what they go through and what they see is there are some scenes in here that I, it's. I've never seen before in a film, and that's exciting to be a part of. The amazing stuff that these performers brought to it, uh, the subtlety, uh, and and this is a, this is a Matthew Fox I've never seen before, and he just killed it, and he's, he is amazing in this. We need to pack up and make a cold camp somewhere else, someplace defensible. If you want to question my morals, do it later. There's really two sides to this guy. There's there's an incredibly violent and and. Um, man who's incredibly good at doing uh, what he does and then when he's in in town and he's in a civilized place he settles into this sort of facade of what what he's what he's all about he's got to as it were being the sheriff take the lead and 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 take these guys on this trip or I should say be the one that we're going is theoretically going to have to make the call. He's going to have to make decisions. But with someone like Matthew's character, if he doesn't like the call, there's really not much you're going to be able to do about it. I thought all these characters on the page were so developed and, and, and they all had their very clear arcs and all those things that actors look for in roles that you don't get a lot. Um, I loved his journey. I thought that they kept, whether it was taking away his ability to walk, just taking away his, you know, you're dealing with his physical uh, constraints, emotional, um, 
even mental, if he's starting to take opium. I mean, he's just, you know, I like being given a set of circumstances and obstacles, and, and Arthur O'Dwyer, my character, Arthur's got a ton of them. Patrick Wilson, uh, that's, a, that's a very physically challenging role, and he rose to the occasion time and time again. I don't know what your opinion is, but uh, my wife said it was all a trick. You know, even when those brothers give us those magnifying glasses and we, uh, we saw those fleas pull that little stagecoach right into the depot or, or roll uh, those cannons, those tiny little cannons onto the battlefield. <laughs> well, I think he's, he's genuine. He's, he's, a, he's a good man. He's a loyal man. Um, he'd do anything for the sheriff. He's a fair man, you know? And he asks the questions that nobody else asks. That maybe people are thinking, but nobody else asks. He just, he, well, he just, there's no filter. He just says it, it just comes out of his mouth. Um, you know, and I think it's, uh, you know, when he's talking about a flea circus, at the, it's like, <laughs> but, it, but it's so perfect. It's so perfect. Uh, something nice that Richard Jenkins said, and, and I have so much respect for him as a performer, uh, the, you know, the first day I met him and you know, we're talking about the script and he said, um, these aren't characters on a page, these are effing people. I was impressed with the cinematography on this movie because most of this stuff is within 30 miles of Los Angeles. And um, I thought he did a fantastic job. Uh, it, it has an epic look to it, which is amazing. And I, I just, uh, I think they had it, again, Craig found really good locations for us to work with. We actually figured out a way to make the entire film in essentially what is two locations. So we found one massive ranch outside of Los Angeles, about 90 miles away or so. And we literally shot the whole movie there except for about five days of the film. So we were just able to traverse this area, keep our base camp, keep everything contained. And you know, you have your problems. I mean, it was hot. It was hot. We were shooting in October outside of Los Angeles in the desert, and we were wearing um, a lot of clothes. It was just, it was a really tight schedule. You know, I made a two hour, 10 minute Western with 70 locations in 21 days, and about 30 people in the cast, it, and stunts, uh, makeup, and all that stuff, and horses. It was, it was not easy. When we signed on, we were 100% down with the script. So we just said, Craig, you are gonna make this version. We're not gonna take a line out. We're not gonna take a page out. We're not gonna take anything out. We will shoot it as is. And we literally did that. We shot every page, every line that was in the original draft, which is something we were proud of. But to be able to do that, Craig was really the linchpin. Because when you go to make a film and you have a director who knows exactly what they want, exactly what they need for every single shot down to the T, it's easy to plan it. And so for us, even though we were very indie, I mean, as indie as you could get on a film like this, even with the great cast, everyone was working for the passion of it. It was, it was old school. The whole thing was old school. There was no CGI. There's, uh, it's all done with the prop guys and the makeup guys did it. It was fantastic. We had great makeup, great prop guys. You know, you look at the, the, the old style wallpaper on the, on the walls and the furniture of the time and, you know, all the, all the little uh, details that came out with the great you know, the art direction and you know props. Freddie Woff and, and Eddie Grisco did you know it was almost an impossible job. The speed we were shooting this movie. So the, the I think there's a moment where that, that people are expecting where there was you know I was really overwhelmed with uh, or would be overwhelmed with everything that was going on and the amount of people and how great it was. But for me, it just kind of went to problem solving one to the next. Uh, and up until the first day of production, every single person who was involved. The exception of Dallas Sonnier, uh, who's my manager in addition to the, being the producer of the movie and someone who financed a, you know, a ton of it out of pocket, uh, didn't think it could be done. We would wake up every day and sometimes that meant waking up at 5 o'clock at night and going and doing a night shoot and we would show up on set and everybody would look at each other and go like, we're making a western. This movie is a truly independent film. It was made by people who decided to forego opportunities within the system and make this movie under their own terms. And that is what's so important to me. When I look back on this film, that's what I take to heart and what I remember the most is how this band of underdogs and misfits and great actors came together and made this phenomenal movie.